Hello everyone and welcome. Uh, this is part two of all of the pages that I have ever colored. Um, 2020 update. So this has everything that I colored this year and in previous years and all of my whips. Um, so I'm gonna start in just some like miscellaneous um, odd sliced books, I guess. Um, so these two books, I believe they're by Dada Mao. Could be, I think. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but these are such pretty books. Um, so this is a page. Um, I can't remember if I completed this one this year or last year. I think it was last year. Um, but I <laughs> love it so much. This paper is so smooth. Um, so personal colors are great on this paper. Um, yeah. I believe that's what I use is just personal color. Um, and yeah, I really love the, how the color scheme turned out. Purples, yellows, and pinks with this in my spring. And then I believe, I feel like there's one more in here. Some, oh yeah, right here. So this is another one that I completed, this emerald, um, I don't know what I, ah, my mind is going blank, um, <laughs> his outfit, I just forgot the term for it, but, um, anyways, in the, a lot of the sea dramas, the, um, what is the word? Wow, I'm just on a roll today. Uh, the divinity in the dramas, they have white hair, so that's why I gave him, like, gray white hair. Um, and this was, I believe, this was also Prismacolor. Yeah. With the, this was, I think, my second attempt at a bokeh background, and it was not too bokeh. <laughs> That's okay. It's practice that. Yeah. If I didn't try it, then I wouldn't know how to not do it wrong. Um, this is a whip. It's been a very ongoing whip. I just need to finish it because this hair is so beautiful. Um, yeah, this has been a whip for a long time. This is also Prism Colors. And I'm really excited to see for how this turns out, but, you know, I'm just, you know, that fear of ruining the page, that's what's getting to me, just like, I want to make sure all of the colors are perfect, because her hair is perfect. <laughs> so, that's another whip, and I can't remember the name of these books, it's, um, escaping me, but, uh, another book that I have a lot done in is Doodlers Anonymous. This was one of the very first books that I got. So it's got a lot. I don't know if I finished any pictures this year. Maybe one? There's these twins. Um, those are Prismacolor. Oh, I love this book. I need to pick this book up again. It's been a long time. Uh, this is one of the first pictures I started coloring in here. So that's been abandoned for a while. <laughs> um, this was, I think, this very second picture that I colored in this book with my uh, budget pencils. And I was really proud of the color scheme. I think it, yeah, I still think it looks nice. Uh, this was last year when I first got my ink tint. Oh, listen to that crinkle. Um, this background reminds me of those. I can't remember the brand of cup, but you all know what I'm talking about, where, yeah, that cup. Or maybe it's on the, uh, fabric and buses, but, yeah, this is like a Loch Ness Monster. That's what I imagine he is. <laughs> um, this was the very first picture that I colored in this book, um, so... Uh, yeah, you can definitely see that my coloring style has changed. Uh, I mostly, well, this one especially, 
it was more about enhancing the patterns than shading in it. I used acrylic paint in the background and it's not like super textured so that was kind of a interesting because I was I, I think this was when I watched one of Dee Dee's videos and she had acrylic and talked about the texture but the particular acrylic I used was not the right kind of acrylic um, to get that texture but I think it still looks cool uh, and then this was budget pencils and fine liners um, and then there's another whip <laughs> Oh man, I really need to color in this book again. I think this is the only book that I have more than one whip going on. This one's kind of wacky. This was Arteza Brush Markers. Uh, I really like this picture. I need to do that one. This was another of the very first pictures that I did. This sailor. And I kind of wanted him to have like a... Like he was graying. His fish beard was going a little gray. But he still got some of his red. Um, so yeah, this one was really fun to do. And it still makes me happy looking at it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, I try not to have more than one whip in a book at a time. So this one is the exception to that rule, as you can see. Like this one, I fell in love with a dress. And then I kind of got lost. Um... But I can have, uh, I have a, oh, sorry, I can see Vision 4 now. This one is pretty wacky. Uh, oh, this one, I am calling this one finished because it's more about the concept of there's this happy umbrella and it's bright, it's yellow, everyone's kind of in their gray world, and then there's the sad umbrella, and it's kind of more um, dull colors, so. Uh, yeah, and then there's this one. I was coloring this one because I thought, oh, it's like a Cinco de Mayo. Not Cinco de Mayo. Oh my gosh. Day of the Dead. Day of the Los Muertos. I am just on a roll. <laughs> Anyways, I thought it was just like skulls and bones. And then I realized there's more to it. So this one's also officially finished because I don't do anything for it. I just, that's not my cup of tea. <gasps> I, think, I love this one. So cute. Um, so yeah, that is Doodlers Anonymous. And then oh, I need to get uh, I love this book and I want it to, to like be one of those things that I can read to my kids. If it falls apart, I will rebind it. This is the only picture that I've done in here is this one that I've completed, and this was when I first got the book and I just have like this expectation of perfection for the rest of the book now because it's so beautiful. <laughs> I thought so long and hard about all of these colors and I think I used like one, two, like five different colors for this ombre effect, which I mean it paid off because it looks so beautiful, but um, yeah, I just want this book to be amazing <laughs> and that holds me back from coloring in it but I want to finish it someday and I've seen a lot of very inspiring videos lately of people's colorings in here so I just need to get to it and I started this one with my watercolor pencils when I first got them before I realized you should not do a whole wash on a page with them because it will blotch but I can add some cool textures and effects to it now that I'm more confident in what I can do um and I just need to finish this a little bit and then yeah so I just need to find another picture in here to color and make beautiful maybe over on this side because this is pretty broken and down there so yeah I just I need to figure out how to get myself to color in this book because it's so beautiful and I will stop gushing Go on to the adventures of Pinocchio by uh, Fabiana Atanasio. I think I've only done one page in here. I love the illustrations. But, so it's this one. Uh, I used water-based pencils. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> you guys. <laughs> I want to show you this water-based marker for all of the base. And then I did Prismacolor on top for the shading. Um, the marker was streaky, but I ended up working my favor because it made him look more like wood. So, yeah. That's the only one I've done in here, but I can't wait to make this like a super bright story as well. Then in Snow White, I have a whip. Oh gosh, I don't know why this is chilling so much. I'm sorry. Um, I do not have that. Uh huh. Here it is. Maybe it's because I cleaned my edges off or something. I don't know. Um, so this is a whip. I started it with budget pencils and I covered all this and then my hand just hurt. So this has been abandoned for a long time. I just need to either finish it or pick a different picture in here so I can have a finished picture in there. Uh, and then in A Million Bears, I have actually finished a couple. Uh, I did this one. I think the end of last year and uh <laughs> I don't know how I don't know I mean I don't hate it but I also don't love it I didn't really spend a whole bunch of time on it I used ink tents for the background and water Albert Durer pencils for their um clothes and then I think I shaded with I mean you can see I did not <gasps> make it smooth at all so yeah I, I mean it gets a little makes it look like fur and then uh, uh here we go i have this one this has been a whip for a really long time i really just have a few small details but sometimes that's just what holds me back the most <laughs> those little details and then this is the first picture that I was coming in this book and I was wanted to use all gel pen and I had some sparkly stuff and then one of my gel pens died and I never got back to it. Now that I have some oh all my gel pens now are sparkly. That'd be so cute. I need to finish this one. And then a million Christmas cats. I actually finished a picture in here this year. Can you believe it? <laughs> I start oh, I start a picture in here every year and always something always major usually happens, but this is my first completed picture in here and it's super simple. I think I spent like uh not even twenty minutes on it. Um the most time I spent was painting in the background, which is that same acrylic paint that I used on the bear. And then I just used water-based marker, shaded over the top with some prismas, added this fur. I wanted the kitty to look like an ornament that had snow on it. <laughs> so, I think it was pretty cute. Um, and then this is a whip that I started last year for the 12 days of Christmas. And I really like how it's turning out. I just need to finish it now. And then this is the first Christmas that I had this book. This one I'm calling finished. It's just simple pattern. Very bright, Christmassy. So that's all I have for those books. Alright, on to my... These are all of my um, Create Space, like Amazon paper books. So this is... Chibi Animals by Dave Summer. This one I bought just for straight coloring because I wanted some bright, cute pictures to look at through. Well, look through with my kids. Um, so this is what I finished for the tiger. And I just, see, this one I think is uh, Super Tips and no, just super tips. And then this is a whip with super tips. This is one of the first ones that I did with super tip markers. 
Also the super tip markers. So just very simple, mindless coloring. This one was another one of the first ones that I colored. Actually, I think it was the very first one that I colored in this book. Ooh, I love that crinkle. So, let's see. And I don't mark when I've done these ones. I think this one is one I did this year. I colored a lot of these um, when my son was born because this was pretty easy coloring to do. I think this hippo turned out so cute. This was with alcohol markers, so you can see it's a lot smoother. Um, and I'm just coloring the first half of the book. Uh, let's see, I know I have... I could have sworn I did another one this year. But yeah, so I started on this rhino, which is cute. Those same, like, baby colors. <laughs> And then, yeah, that's all that I have colored in there. Sorry my camera keeps wiggling. Um, here, let me, let me just turn it a little bit. Alright, sorry, that seems a little bit more sturdy now. We shall see. Um, this is... Uh, the Manga Artist's Coloring Book for Girls. This one, I colored this one last year. And I guess this is actually supposed to be Sailor Moon. More of like, uh, what's the word? A fan art of her. But I did my own twist on it. I gave her pink hair. <laughs> and I was so proud of this background. I traced over... I patiently trace over all that with my Jelly Roll gel pen, and then I did the rest with alcohol marker, and I'm really proud of her hair. I think that turned out great. I need to work on, like, shading elsewhere with alcohol marker. That's all I've done in here. And then this year, I colored a page in Ladies of Leisure. It's this one. This one reminds me of Anne from the old Anne of Green Gables show um, or just like how I kind of imagine her in my head I guess and she's like um, the scene where she's the lady of the lake or whatever I don't know uh, just reminds me of that so that's why I gave her red hair and <laughs> I thought the puff sleeves too <laughs> Um, but this was an alcohol marker base, and then I went over the top of it with uh, Prismacolors, um, which I do pretty often in the Create Space books. Okay, and then, oh, I need to, <gasps> I forgot about this book. This is such a cute book. I started this picture with my alcohol markers, and I kind of messed up on the hair. Um, I'm just going to go with it now. I'll fix it, kind of make it groovy, and um, color this in, because this is, this is Rose Red, I believe, from the fairy tale of Rose Red Snow White, but, oh, I need to pull this book out again, because the artwork in this one, this is The Brothers Grimm, illustrated by Forrest Diver, oh, yes, yes, okay, Cat Doodles, Cuteness Overload, have I only done this one? one I did a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't hate it, but I don't love it. It was one of the first, within like the first few months of me really getting into coloring. Um, but it was, it was fun. The process was fun and that's what's important. It's not always the end result, but the process of coloring. And then this is a little known Kirby Rosanne's book. This is Doodle Invasion, um, put out by Zifflin. I don't know. Um, this is the only picture that I've colored in here. This is, oh, I bought this forever ago too. Um, <laughs> uh, but this is water based marker, so super tips and Prismacolor. This was before 
I bought the full set of Prismas and I was only using the open stock that I had bought in college for my art classes, so I only had a handful of shades. So, um, but this was super fun to do. I really need to color in this book some more. This is very reminiscent of his earlier work where it's very, 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 very doodly in his coloring books. Like, um, that's why I picked everything here is one color, everything here is one color because it can get kind of overwhelming. Uh, I've done, I think, a couple in Mermaid's Fairies and Other Girls of Whimsy by Hannah Lynn. I need to pick this book up again, too. There's so many good books. Maybe I've only done one. I have only... Shame on me. I've only done one in this book. Oh, it's so... Uh... Okay, but it does have a lot of detail. Um, this is one I did when I first got the book, so it would have been two years ago. Um, and this is water-based marker with Prismacolor on top. I love her hair and the purple and orange and blue. I think of the color scheme is really cute. When I first colored it, I didn't really like it that much. I thought, oh, this doesn't look that great. But, like, looking at it now, I do really like it. <laughs> so sometimes things just get better with time. Um, Bennett Klein, Color My Sketchbook Epic. It was really epic. Oh. See, sometimes I just forget about these books that I've had for a while. Um, oh, this one. Oh, you know how gnomes are like the rage right now? I need to color that guy. Oh, that's going to be fun. Um, but this one, I did the end of last year, I believe. Um, and I used alcohol marker for everything. And then I shaded uh, with polychromos because I found out that polychromos uh, work so much better on this um, like copy type paper just because it's a harder pencil um, but yeah I think this one turned out really pretty and it was pretty simple I only shaded where there was shading on the grayscale and just let the alcohol marker do the rest but these books are just, wow. <laughs> um, so that's epic. And then Color My Sketchbook, the original. I have a whip. It's been a whip for a really long time. With Prismacolors. And it's this awesome octopus on the lady's head. It's going to be pretty pretty cool when it's finished and I mean it's not gonna be that hard like back then when I first got this book I was pretty intimidated but I think I could tackle it now like I have a vision for that picture uh and then color my sketchbook unearthed I have I don't know I think it's another wit yeah I think I was doing a tutorial on coloring grayscale fabric and I mean that looks so cool <laughs> I, and I'm really glad that I wrote down the colors this is with Prismas I believe I'm pretty certain oh yeah because Prismas look a lot greenier than polychromos do on here when you have a lot of layers but yeah I really need to finish this one because Miss Fox Lady, what is her name? Mmme Palmer. I don't know. Okay, I digress. Um, and then in the coloring book that I illustrated, Flowers, Fairies, and Birds, I did this picture. This was with Prismas, and then I did a acrylic background, and then did pencil on top, and this. Uh, acrylic is so velvety feeling and it picked up these like fairy light pencil um oh my gosh well, the fairy lights that I drew in with colored pencil picked up very well <laughs> uh and then 
Um, this one I did last year. This is when I realized polychromos work amazingly in this book. Um, see that shimmer? I added some glitter around the border. And, um, yeah, I really like how this one turned out. At first, I didn't love that I put in these yellow spots, but it's kind of grow on me. <laughs> I think it's cute. And, uh, yeah, I mean, there's two of each picture, so I can always just recolor it. Uh, and then in Femme Fatale, uh, this is another book that I did. Let's see. Uh, is that the first one? Yeah, okay. So this is the first picture I colored in here. And this is like the big bad wolf. It's a lady. <laughs> She's wearing like a wolf um, skin. Uh, and then she's got the claws around her waist. But this is Prismacolors and acrylic paint for this mist. And then this is Lady Tremaine. And this is when I first got my alcohol markers and I was like, I really want to color something. So I colored this. Um, I did not take my time on it and I wish I would have, <laughs> but I think it's still, I really like the colors and stuff. Um, and I can always color it again. And then 50 states to color, which is the USA coloring book. Oh, sorry. Oh, oh. um. I decided I want to finish this by the end of next year, so we shall see. Um, I finished Alabama. This is, everything is based in alcohol marker. I'll just say that, just so I don't have to say that every single picture. Everything is based in alcohol marker, and then on here, I shaded with polychromos, and I did these little white accents with Jelly Roll. So that's Alabama. And then Alaska, um, I was doing, oh, and I also did my fine tech watercolor for the star for the capital city location. Um, but yeah, over this one, I did poly, uh, Prismacolors, and then this one is Arizona, and I did, um, some glitter gel pen. I don't know if you can see it. It's the gold. Uh, and then prism the color for shading on top. And then this one I think is really cool. So um, Arkansas is known for its um, quartz and natural or and crystals. So um, that's why. I thought it'd be perfect to do my pearlescent watercolors that I got from Fine Tech for the, um, yeah, there you go, for the crystals, just because it, like, adds that extra effect. Um, and then California, I still need to add shading to, as well as Colorado, and Connecticut. Um, I think I'm calling Connecticut finished. I feel like it feels finished. Um, and then Delaware, I shaded over the top with Prismacolors. And I think <gasps> this color scheme turned out so cute. At first, I was really, really, really nervous to do so much black, but I think it turned out super cute. And then Florida, I still need to shade over. I'm excited to shade over these. And then Georgia, I used my new glitter pens. And look how glittery these are. Oh my goodness. That is so glittery. <laughs> Shiny. Um, yeah, so I just need to shade the peaches. I mean, I think it looks really cute just by itself. But we'll see. I might get to shading it. And then here's Hawaii with also glitter gel pen. Oh, look at that. Um, this is um, on Georgia is when I got my new um, glitter 
gel pens and they are glitter rubbers. Okay, Idaho, I have not done anything. I was trying to decide how I want to go about it uh, because it's a lot of jewels and stones. Um, so we'll see. And then here's Illinois, which also has, I can't, I don't know if you can see it, but around the shell, oh yeah, there you go, is glitter, glitter. <laughs> um, I just need to do a little bit of shading. Um, I think these colors are fun and kind of out there, which is fun. And then Indiana, I am loving Indiana so far. I want to, I want to shade the peony so bad. I'm excited to do that. And then we have Iowa. And then that's where I, oh, I started Kansas. And then, um, for everything else, I painted in the star. But I had not colored anymore here because we moved and I just had a gajillion things. So I need to start coloring in that one again because I want to finish it. Uh, and then Chibi Girls 2-in-1, I've done a few, I started this one this year, I believe, no, last year, when I first got it, and I just based some of the parts in alcohol marker, and then I'll go in and add some extra shading, uh, Okay, this is the one that I did this year. I did I did this one for Easter, but I did it after Easter. <laughs> um, but I think it turned out so pretty, so cute. I mostly did, yeah, I just, in some of these places, I didn't even do shading just because the gray scale worked so well. Um, so the only place I did shading was on her bunny outfit. Uh, and her skin, and I did some shading with alcohol markers, uh, yeah, so that one's cute, and then this one I just straight colored, I did use multiple colors in her hair, and I think her hair turned out really cute, um, and this one I used alcohol marker and then for some colors on top and this one is like a I think I have it as a tutorial just to show how even just adding one layer of shading and grayscale can make it really pop and you don't really have to know a lot about shading to do that because the grayscale kind of does it for you shows you where you need to add that shadow and then a book wow coloring book got this one this year so I've only colored one picture this was a quick I just need to color something really fast picture so I colored it really fast <laughs> I think I spent maybe 10 minutes on it nothing too crazy as you can tell it's just yeah um but I think it's fun it's fun and this has so many pictures in it I think it's how many pages 300. All right, let me go grab some more books. All right, we are getting there. I only have this stack and one other stack. <laughs> um, so maybe um, I will just make this a little extra long, I guess. So I've only colored a couple pictures, and this is Po Drukiesh Stronisnu. I don't speak Polish. I wish I did. I had a Polish roommate. Um, but uh, this is Paul Prismacolor and Arteza brush pins, I believe, for her hair. And then I shaded over that. Uh, and then this one. Oh, I completely forgot I did this one. I did this one this year. This is with Ink Tense. And this was super fast, super easy. Oh my goodness. I totally forgot I did that one. This is great. <laughs> Uh, here's a whip. This is with um, our 
to use the brush pens and it bled through a little bit but thankfully this is a pretty splotchy page anyways so it doesn't matter too much and then the first page that I colored in here is this one um this was with the Arteza brush pens and I think watercolor and Prismacolor. It's been a while. <laughs> I just kind of threw everything at it because um, yeah, it also bled through a little bit. But this is also a very splotchy page and I can easily cover that up. Um, so those are the ones I've done there. And... Then in Ticket to Dreams, I've done quite a few. I love this book. And I did a good number this year. So this is one that I did at the beginning of the year. And I love how it turned out. I love these bright purple and pink and green. Oh, it just looks great. And this was... Uh, Ink Tints? Yeah, this was Ink Tints and I think some marker... Um, and then pencil to add in the wood grain details. That was really fun to work on. And I did a lot of these when my son was first born because I would just sit there while I was like, getting, you know, holding cute little newborn while he's sleeping. And I would color with my other hand and it was really easy to do that with ink tents. So I did a lot in ink tents. Um, this is one that I did love the the painterly feel of it and um, it's a king or a queen and then here's one that I did a couple of years ago let me let me let me do some readjusting here so I realized <laughs> that I've been talking because I, I paused recording to adjust things and I've been talking for like 10 or 15 minutes and realized I didn't actually push play. So if this is repeated, I apologize. I will go through this quickly. Um, <laughs> but yes, so <laughs> it's one of those days. <laughs> um, This is done in, um, <laughs> water-based marker and polychromos. Sorry, wow. I just cannot stop laughing at myself. Uh, this is when I did this year in ink tents, and I loved picking out these colors in here and um, kind of creating this, um, it's not really a vignette, but like, kind of like a brooch almost. I don't know what that term is. This is one I did with Arteza brush markers, brush pens, uh, and I really just had fun and made it feel painterly, and I really love how it turned out. So happy with it, and then I did the background, which is kind of galaxy y, but I feel like it didn't quite line up. But I will embrace it because I love the fox that is actually, I think, a wolf, but that's okay. Imagination. Uh, this is one I did this year with Ink Tents, and it was super quick. Um, but it took me a while to do just because I did these um, buds and then I didn't know what color to pick. So it sat there for a while, but it wasn't, process wasn't very long. This one was um, polychromos and I believe just like a regular old marker on the owl from the base. And here we have another one with ink tents. I didn't end up loving the colors, so I didn't end up spending too much 
making it look nice, I guess. Um, <laughs> which is bad. <laughs> um, and then this is what I did, I think, last year, and I was, I spilled water on it, but it works. Um, I kind of made it kind of bleedy and cool. And this is with the Arteza brush pens, hence why I spilled water, because I was trying to use it to do ombre. Because if you dip it, then it dilutes it, and then as you paint, it gets more saturated. This is one I did last year when I first got my ink tents. I love this colors for the um, night sky. And this is one I did this year. I This is probably one of the favorite ones that I did in her book this year. Uh, I just think it's really pretty and nostalgic. Um, feeling. I don't know why, but it feels nostalgic. And oh, that's everything. Um, and there. And then we have Mon Mandala Meditation coloring book, which this is the only Mandala coloring book that I actually own. And this one I also just kind of color here and there. Sometimes I finish one, sometimes I go to a different one. I feel like this one has a nice range of mandalas. Um, this is one that I colored. I did not do any this year. So these are all past. And I just use markers. Nothing too fancy schmancy. Uh, Roy G. Biff color scheme. And yeah, this one has a lot of very, very, very detailed mandalas in it. That's probably why I haven't picked it up too much. There's another one. There's another one. <laughs> I think this is the one my husband started doing. Um, because I could kind of get him into coloring. <laughs> but, um, it's just not his cup of tea, which is a okay. And yeah, that's all I've done in there. Then in the look, I've done a couple, I think, I know I've started one. One is, okay, so this is one I did last year, and I was super proud of how it turned out, and I still love it. Um, so I used washi tape for her jacket, and I love this washi tape. I think the pattern combination is really cool and, like, um, very in. She's a high street, uh, fashionista with her turtleneck and her multi-pattern blazer. <laughs> I used to watch a lot of fashion videos on YouTube. Uh, but I stopped. So I would stop wanting to buy clothes. <laughs> Anyways, um, then we have this one. I This is the first one I started. I did not like her skin. Um, this was my first attempt at skin with pencils. And I didn't like how it was turning out. Now looking at it, it's not as icky as I thought. And I could probably go in and save it. Because uh, I really think this picture will be so cool when it's done. But yeah, I love this book. Uh, I need to color more in that one, as every single book that I own. Okay, we have Fairy Tales by Emily Lightahall Holberg. I can't remember if I completed any this year. Um, I did this cute little deer a couple years ago, and I did purple for the shading on the base of the blue and then add it on top and this is waxy feeling so it's definitely Prismas. Oh, I was gonna color in here in December and I just didn't get around to it. December was a lot busier than I anticipated it being. Um, this is what I did last year and because I love reading and I think I thought this cottage was super cute. This is also Prismas. Because Prismacolor are like a dream on this paper. At least I think so. I know some don't feel that same way, but I think it's amazing. 
Um, this is also Prismacolor with an acrylic background. And it feels so velvety. Um, and I love these colors together. I think they're really pretty. And that is all in there. Yeah, I didn't do any other than there this year. And shame on me, I've only colored one picture in this book by Camilla de Erico. Is this pop manga? 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 Manga, I think. Um, I really want to do this honeycomb one. Uh, this is the one that I did. I think this was my second attempt at skin tone and I was a lot happier. This was my first attempt at doing um, hair with colored pencils. And I think for the first time doing, because I, I had only painted hair prior or like drawn it. So I was pretty proud of it. I think it's pretty cute and shiny. So that must have been Prismas. Okay. Uh, we are getting there. Dreamweaver by Olivia Whitworth. I've gone in and done all of the cat and the lady her clothes and some of her skin. Um, and then I did this double page spread, which um, this whole book is double page spread, which is good because it's, I don't know why, but I just gravitate more towards single page spreads and I want to do more double page spreads because there are some very pretty ones. So this is one I did all in ink tents last year and I love how it turned out and I need to do the rest. Like, so my concept for the book, I don't think I, I don't know if I've explained this, but I want all of her, like, while she's dreaming, it's in black and white um, when it shows her sleeping. Like, there's a corner of her room that's going to be in black and white. Um, this is her black and white, and then in the dream, it's in color. Just because I think that will add a cool extra little element. Anyways, so I need to that book. And then Mouse Guard. I've done a few. Um, yeah, so I did this one last year with Ink Tense. This is the first one I realized, oh, Ink Tense in this book is amazing. Just like makes his illustrations pop off the page. This is one that I did this year. This was super fast. So fast. I think I did it in like one sitting and my husband was like, whoa, that was that's amazing. And this is also ink tense. Um, and here we have one that I did in Prismacolors. And I think that one's pretty. I think this book is so cool. And then this is the very first picture that I colored in here when I first bought the book. And this was with Prismas. And this was also super fast. I love how the ink looks turned out. Um, and then an enchanted forest. Uh, I have just this one whip. It's so close to being finished. I have a good number like that. Uh, so I, yeah, I just need to buckle down and finish it. But I love the hot pink purple a typical color scheme <laughs> i need to figure out how i want to do the background to make it enhanced okay johannes christmas this is the very first coloring adult coloring book that i ever owned my mom gave it to me um so there are some new pages missing because uh, she bought herself a new copy this is what i started last year and my son decided to help. Um, maybe I'll use this page to do a tutorial on how to do silver or just metal in general. Because um, I know there's been interest expressed in that. This, I think I colored this with my Prismacolors before I had the 150 set. And this was back when it was just like, you know, dabbling during Christmas time. Nothing too crazy. There's, um, 
the reindeer mandala, which I really like the low key color scheme, and then this gingerbread house. This was super fun. And this was when I was like, <coughs> excuse me. This is when I realized I need to get the full set of prism colors. So, yeah. Um, and this is another one that I did. I really love this one. That was with prism colors. Um, so that's Johanna's Christmas. Okay, I'm almost finished. I only have, I think, and more books so not enough to do a whole separate video um so please bear with me okay so we have the magical journey by lucy Marie cullen and i just have a whip that makes this so fast okay so this is with prismas this is all i've done in this book which is sad because it's so beautiful i need to i need to color in them in the Magical City, I've done a couple of pictures. Where, where are you? Where are you, picture? Why can't I find you? Um, wow. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is the first one that I did, and I was like, oh, I need to do more. <laughs> um, this is with Inktense, and I finally understood why everyone loves Inktense. I also did some shading with uh, Polychromos, I think. Um, I've done one more. I know I've done one more. I marked it. Oh. So I did this one. Uh, right here. Also in Inktense. And this one I just did Inktense. Um, and it's crazy because her illustrations are kind of out there. But once you color something, everything else starts making sense. It's kind of cool. So that's in the Magical City. Alright, last stack of books. World of Flowers, Johanna Bassford. I did one last year. This is with my Operator watercolor pencils. This is one of the first pictures that I started doing with them. I did the background and I did, and then I did these with polychromos, these leaves, and then I abandoned it because I didn't know what to do next. And then I went back to it and with the watercolor pencils, after it, I'd had more practice with them, um, you can kind of see a difference, but I did the dangling flowers and the house. So that's all I've done here, which is sad because it's also a very beautiful book. But I, there's so many I need to do. So many. So little time. Oh. So I just have a whip and this one right here. So this is with Prismacolor. And oh, now that I have fine tech, oh my goodness, I could do some pretty stuff. I could do like gilded. I could make it look gilded. Oh, ideas. Ooh, I just want to make everything shiny now. <laughs> uh, okay, in Villain Sand, I've done the title page with Polychromos. And then I've done, funnily enough, they were right next to each other, but totally separate times. Oh, come on. Where did you go? There. Um, so this is the first picture that I did. This is, they are both done with polychromos. And, um, this one I did last year. And I love how this flower and this background turned out. I'm not as in love with the some of the greenery down here, but that's fine. And then I did this dragon that's helping with the harvest, and oh, I'm so happy with it. I love the colors, and it was really fun to work on. Um, yeah. Sometimes, yeah, I, th I spent a long time working on this one because, I mean so many details and I wanted to get all of the colors right 
but yes. This one right over there. And then in Romantic Country, I think I have a whip. Yeah, I have a whip right here. This is when I started this year. Just need to finish it. Because, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not a complicated picture at all. I need to color in Romantic Country more again. I've seen so many, so many beautiful colorings in there recently. And I need to get back into this coloring room. Um, this is my, I think this was my very first live stream coloring chat before YouTube made the limit that you had to have a thousand subscribers to do that um, on your phone. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was really fun. I used New Pastel by Prismacolor and uh, Prismacolor pencils. And I love this. It just looks, it's so soft. And wait a minute. Where's my Christopher Robin page? <gasps> Is that Nita book? That might be Nita book. Um, I need to show my work. Oh. How? What? <gasps> oh no. Oh, I don't have a time. <laughs> uh, let me let me show Kirby last because I have a lot of Kirby. Um, let's do the Time Garden. This is by Daria Song. This has been an abandoned whip for a long time. I'll like come back to it here and there, but it's this one. I did this awesome wallpaper with um glitter gel pen. And then I was like, I need a break. And <laughs> it's been a long break, but I need to finish it because, I mean, can you imagine how beautiful this page is going to be just with that amazing wallpaper that's drawn on there? Um, so yeah, I need to finish that. I just need to do it. <laughs> I need to bite the bullet and do it. And then Gnomes in the Neighborhood. I'm surprised. But I have not colored in here more. I only have one whip. It's this one. Super fun. Super spunky gnome. And it's going to be super quick. Um, but it's great because it's double sided. Which, or single sided. Which means I can use anything I want. With just something behind it. And it'll be great. But I think these flowers are fun. I forgot I had this whip. I need to finish it. Fantasia by Nicholas Chandrarinana. I've done a couple this year. This is a whip that I started a couple years ago. This is, um, yeah. This is like the first time that I started a skin tone that I was actually, oh, that's actually not that bad. And okay, this is one that I did this year and I absolutely love this one. So uh, I have my fine tech watercolor for these leaves and I did glitter gel pen. I stippled it um, with the glitter gel pen so it's sparkly and then her halo is fine tech watercolor and everything's just kind of like this different variation of gold and I love it because it makes it feel to me very angelic and ethereal and stuff. So that's one of my favorite ones that I've done in this book, actually. Um, I have a lot of fun doing m more monochromatic pages because I think it challenges me quite a bit um, to think outside the box. Uh, and then this is another one that I did this year with um, Ink Tense because Ink Tense is so awesome on this paper. It just soaks up that water, which gives you a little bit more time to like blend and spread it around. And yes, it is awesome. So, so awesome. So, there's my Koi Fish Pond. And another one that I started this year is this 
um, Japanese picture um, ink tints in the background and then I just kind of saw all the little details was like oh I need to take a break <laughs> from it sometimes it just scares me away uh this is one of the first ones that I did in here I threw everything at this I did watercolor pencil I did my Arteza brush pens I did regular watercolor uh, I did polychrome, or else I colored every single scalp individually and tried shading it. Um, and acrylic for the background because my original background was, it was no bueno. So I thought, hey, I'll just paint over it with acrylic. And I ended up just like making everything pop off the page, which was awesome. So if all else fails, just covered up with acrylic. Uh, I need to figure out what this is. So I think this is one of the first pictures I colored in here. Uh, acrylic for the dark green, and then my Arteza brush pens for the shading here. And it kind of, I took a water and a paintbrush and made it like this. So I think it turned out really cool. But um, it kind of bled through a little bit. That's fine. T Rex can be blue. We actually don't know what color T Rex was, so he could have been like super bright blue. Oh, there it is. Okay, this guy reminds me of an orc. I'm just gonna say it. Uh, this is one I did last year with ink tents. Wait a minute, I'm missing one. Um, this is these pretty roses. I gotta find it because it's a pretty one. Where are you? Come on. Because this is the picture that helped me realize how amazing Intense is in this book. There's a free book here. Um, there it is. There it is. Um, this is my second favorite picture in this book. <laughs> That's why I had to show you all. Um, so this is all ink tents. And let me tell you, this was so fun to work on. Like sometimes I'm like, ah, ah, when I get to like, almost being finished it's really hard to like get that last push but this one I was like oh this is awesome the whole time so um yeah <laughs> I just think it turned out so cool and it's all intense and it looks so nice I love the color scheme so yeah that is all in Nicholas Chimbalado okay let's do so, Mythomorphia, I believe, is actually the first Kirby Roseanne's coloring book that I bought. Because um, I didn't really feel... This was his... It was, I think it was, like, barely out, and I didn't really feel it for Anamorphia or Matrimorphia as much. But I love this one. <laughs> um... So this is the first picture that I colored in here with my budget pencils. And this was before I realized I could just use watercolor for the green and yeah. So I colored all of this with pencil and it took forever. And it's really hard for me to be motivated to color greenery, but I did. I did it. I need to color in this book too. Oh, it's so I love this book. Um, this is another one that I did. I think this was the first color, color along that I ever participated in. Um, this Medusa lady, and this is with Prism Colors. And I think it turned out really cool. At first, I kept her eyes just like plain white, and then I decided to make them black. Um, and I think it was cool. And also, 
um, just as a side note, um, so all of these are green except for this one because, like, you know, with hydras, there's, like, always the main head. So this is the main snake. So in my, like, head, I imagine the way that you can defeat Medusa is if you, you know, the snakes, you gotta find the head snake, the main snake. Uh, and then Worlds with Men Worlds is his latest book. <sighs> it is my absolute favorite of his so far. I am excited for the one coming out in March. I cannot wait to see what the one looks like. Um, this is Worlds with Men Worlds. And I just did this one in December. And this is very uncommon for me to do a double page spread, but I did. And... So I used water, I used um, super tip markers for the green, and then I shaded over that with polychromos. And then used polychromos in these little insides. And then for the rabbits and the background, I used Aperture watercolor pencils. And I love this background, it's just very sweet and simple and pretty in white. So that one I'm very happy with. That's one I completed in December. Um, okay, I'm going to do Phantom Trail very last because it's the only, it's completed. So I'm just going to flip through it really fast. Um, so this one is Geomorphia. Uh, this is the first one I colored in here. Oh, I did that. I think I did this last year, but I forgot to show it. This is with personal colors, and um, this scene reminded me of that scene in The Last Unicorn. I don't know why. This is one I did this year, which was super fun, but it took oh so long to do all of this green. I used my aperture watercolor pencils for all of the rocks and the elephant and tree and the greenery. And then I used my watercolor tin uh, for the clouds. Um, and then one that I did in November is this um, polar bear in, a, in the Arctic. And I added this like glittery acrylic paint because I thought it would like add this like icy effect to the iceberg and i tried to, to do the uh <laughs> lights but uh <laughs> i need to practice more on that but yeah that's super fun to do and lastly is phantom morphia i do have a very detailed flip of this completed so i will just kind of go through and show you really fast okay so i did not do this one this is the only page that I didn't color, but it's because it's a duplicate. Um, I almost didn't color these ones. Or, no, sorry. I almost didn't color these ones, so I just added a wash to these. Um, but this is just watercolor with Prismas, I believe, for shading. Uh, this is the first picture I colored in here with budget color pencils. I don't have them anymore. Um, and then this is one, this is my first attempt doing something chrome, and I used jewel tones for the butterflies to, like, create this, like, it's like a sculptural jewel effect, I think, and added shading, so I really love how this one turned out, I think it's really cool, and this is with Color. No, this is with Polychromos. And then this is Ink Tense and Pencil. This is Watercolor and Polychromos. Um, this book really intimidated me because there's so much metal work. Um, so I decided that I would complete it. So I would force myself to learn how to do these things. So I want to, I've been meaning to make 
some tutorials on how to color metallics um, because I'm sure I'm not the only one who was intimidated by that. Um, this one uh, was really fun. Um, I used my watercolor, like my normal watercolors for the cat and the hat and the background and then polychromos for the shading on the metal pieces. And I think this is my most liked picture on Instagram, actually. Um, this one, I absolutely love how this guy turned out. Uh, at first I was very... One thing I noticed is if I did a wash of watercolor over a general area that was the same, it helped me a lot um, with like those very detailed um, things just to see how it would work as a page. So I did a wash of gray because um, I wanted it to be steel. I wanted these two metals to contrast. Um, and then I shaded with polychromos and then I did this copper with polychromos and I want to do a tutorial on this because I'm very proud of it. <laughs> and I want to show how to do similar metal effects. Um, this is one I did with watercolor pencils, super pretty, and kind of reminds me of like the cherry blossom tree and you know something from an anime. Uh, this is the first picture I colored in here I think, and I used glitter gel pen, the black one on the back, and ran out, so I used a different color on the tip, and then Prismacolors for everything else. Uh, I love this one. So one awesome thing, I know a lot of people aren't happy about the single pageness, um, but it allows you to use alcohol markers. So I did a base on everything with alcohol markers and then shaded to make this look like it was like, um, what is it? iodizing like rusting kind of um these cogs and then this like contrast of bright life just like coming alive off of it um and i used prismacolors for that i believe and then this one is a wash of watercolor and then i did um kind of like a mini Posca, it's a different brand for the web, and then I was like, you know what, this feels finished. And I might add some like gray shading, but I wanted this to be very low, low key. I don't know, it just felt finished, so I counted it. And then this one, I used ink tents and polychromos, um, and I'm really proud of this one. I think it turned out really, really cool. Yeah, super happy with that one. This one is a, another earlier one, all with Prismacolor. And I think the color scheme for this is really fun. This is one I did, I used some ink. Oh, that just popped off. I used ink, I like got the whole page wet and used ink. And then this is alcohol marker everything else. Um, this is a very early one. I used brush pens and um, that looks like ink tints. Maybe it's not an earlier one. I just, yeah, it's not my favorite in this book. Um, this is one that I did with a wash of watercolor and then just like various uh oh. Pencils. I think this was ink tents as well. And glitter. Some glitter gel pen. And then I wrote this quote in cursive to make it look like parchment. And it says, Why blend in when you were born to stand out? Um, this is the earlier one that I did. Super fast. Uh, acrylic background. And then. Polychromos, I believe. 
Um, this one I thought would be cool to like swap it. So I'm doing black roses on this crown with a red background. Um, this is another one of my very, very favorites from this book. I love how this picture turned out and I need to frame this one because it just looks so awesome. So I was also very intimidated by jewels. So I also want to show how I did these jewels because it was so much simpler than I thought. And um, yeah, this is probably my favorite. And then this one I just did um i think i did a wash with my uh watercolor pencils and then because it's the faber castell brand i used my same color of the polychromos pencil for the shading and that's everything <gasps> and that i believe is everything that i have ever colored wow this is such a long video. Thank you for watching this far if you made it this far. You get super duper brown points. And um, let me know what you thought. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Happy coloring and happy new year.